Hi. Today I want to show you how to do a shading, a graduated bleed of colour on my first block here. So if you watched my previous film you'll have seen me struggling to print the completely flat grey background. So I now have in my damp pack a set of prints, proof prints, test prints with the grey background on and what I've done is I've put them in order of success. So the least successful print is the first print I'm going to use for testing this shading and I'm going to work my way back to the better prints at the back of the pack. So at this stage I'm still proofing, I'm not additioning, this is still testing. So we're not looking for perfection here, it's just getting things sorted out. You'll also notice that I'm standing up. I always find it much more comfortable to print Japanese woodblock standing um, unless it's a really tiny print that I can do sitting down, I always work standing, so um, that's why I've changed position. So I've got my block here and I've damped it, like I did in the previous film. I've got a little squirt of water on there and I'm going to be working on this area of the print, sort of around this sort of area. So I want a darker shading at the base of the waterfall here. So I'm not going to be printing up here, so I'm not so worried about whether that's damp or not. I want this bit to be damp. And if you watched the episode on mixing colour and watercolour paints, you'll remember that I mixed up my grey and I kept some of the darker mix back. So I've got it here and I'm going to use the same colour, just a darker, a more uh, pigmented mix here to put the darker shadow area on there. So I'm looking for quite a subtle shadow. And I've also got a nice big fat wide brush. And this brush I bought in Japan, it's a deer hair brush. So it's got um, slightly bristly and it works very well for me. And I'll explain why there is a bit of pink tape on it in a moment. So now I've got my block nice and damp, let me just grab my rag and again it's the damp bit of the rag that I'm going to use to wipe the excess water off. So I'm not drying the block, I'm just getting rid of the excess water. And I'm just going to make things a little bit easier on myself. I'm going to put some rice on the block again to keep everything smooth. Um, you wouldn't see this in traditional Japanese we've got printing but I'm going to do it just to work a little bit of rice in to smooth things out. I find that makes things a little bit easier. So I'm going to do that before I get started in the area where I want to put my shading. And again I'm going to wipe any excess rice off my brush. So to do the shading, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my darker paint and I'm going to put it where I want the dark area to be. So it's sort of basically here. And I'm putting it on in a strip of colour. The more paint that you put on the block, the wider your shading is going to get. So I'm keeping it fairly small here. And I'm putting it on in a strip rather than in blobs of colour because it's much easier to blend and pull out in a strip of paint. If it were in blobs, you'd have to mix the blobs together and then pull them out. So that's what I'm doing. And then I'm going to pick up my rice and just put some little bits of rice. And you see how I'm using the sort of side of the chopstick to let the rice um, go down. I'm trying to keep the chopstick nice and clean so I don't end up with grotty rice paste. And now I'm going to go to my brush and the whole trick of this is that half the brush goes in the paint and the other half doesn't because that way you can blend the colour. As soon as there's paint all over the brush you're just inking up as normal. So I've put this pink tape to remind me that this bit of the brush has not got any paint on it. So I'm going to start by tilting the brush so that only one half of the brush is in contact with the paint and I'm just blending the rice at the moment. And then I'm going to bring the brush flat in contact with the wood and I'm just doing little swirls. Brush is down on that wood 
and I'm pulling the paint doing little circles blending as I go and wherever I have to do blending where I might get something uh, some paint on this bit of the brush I'm tilting the brush so that I don't so one half of the brush is clean the other half is not and I'm just taking my time to work back and forth to get a nice gradation so it's just blend 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 See? and kind of what you see is what you get so if you see any hard lines you need to blend some more and if the paint seems like it's stuck and it won't move put a little bit more rice on and that will lubricate everything and get it moving so i think we're okay there for a first attempt so i've got my most rubbish print to use for this so let me just grab that and So scissor fingers again to hold the paper and just let it drop into place and down. And again, it's taking your time rather than pushing hard, just working over so let's have a little look at what we've got so you can see I've got a shading there it's okay, I mean the shading's okay but everything's a bit lumpy bumpy because this is like the rubbish first print so I'm going to go on to the next one. So I'm going to go on to the next print, but before I do another shading, it's very important to wipe off the first one, because if you just start putting shading on top of shading on top of shading, it's going to get clumsy really quickly. So I'm just going to wipe off again with the damp towel. There, to give me so give me a clean area and same as before put another line now if I were printing in a traditional print workshop I would be expected to get each shading identical um, in every print I'm glad to say that I am not in that situation but when I'm additioning rather than proofing like I am for you now, then I would be focusing, I wouldn't be chatting, and I would be doing one shading after another as I work through the batch of prints. So they would be pretty consistent. So in fact, um, my Japanese woodblock prints, if anything, are more consistent than my lino cuts in each one being reasonably identical to the next. It's not something that I lose any sleep about though because this is a hand printing process and I am a creative artist I'm not an expert printer carver like Will Francis for example who's featured on this series of films so my approach is a little bit more relaxed and a little bit more flexible so again I'm using the painty half to blend the paint and the non-painty half is allowing me to create that bleed of colour. So I'm going to go to my next one.
that's getting better you can see it's getting slightly smoother so we're on the bamboo here and I'm just going to work my way through but what we'll do is resume filming again when I'm in the later stages to show you one where the background is much smoother and you can see better what I'm doing. So I'm just working my way through all the prints and coming up to the last one now. So you can see I've got a much flatter grey at the top here and here I've got my shading. So that's the end of this block and in the next film I'm going to be moving on to the rest of the background. So I am going to be printing this uh, block that I did to look like brush marks and combining that with the wood grain on the U plank. So I hope this film's been useful and I hope you'll join me for some more printing.